Church family. My name is Faye Schultz and I'm the New City Church care pastor. I help the care team in directing the care that we need to take care of God's family. And I'm happy today to give you a soap. And today we're going to talk about the scripture I chose, which is Psalm 28 verse 7. I'm going to read it in the King James Version. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song I will praise him. I chose this because I've been going through a lot of things lately with my husband who had surgery, and the Lord just showed me that he's been with us through it all. And so I want to talk about things I observed from this verse first. The Psalm of David spoke to me because it is a statement of faith. It takes faith to go through things, doesn't it? It's about declaring, I am trusting in God, that he is my strength, he is my shield. A shield is defined as wearable protection. I know you're thinking of Wonder Woman, aren't you? But it's a broad piece of suitable material that you put on by choice. And the choice we have in trusting God's word is to put God's word on by faith. We put it on, we make a choice. The choice is to trust him or not to trust him. He is our father waiting for us to get ready. It makes me think of my grandchildren waiting in the foyer of my daughter's home, getting their caps and their gloves and their hats and their shoes or whatever on, coats. Sometimes it takes them a while, and sometimes they choose not to do it and walk out with not being ready. But we have a choice to get ready, and sometimes it's hard to wait. Sometimes it's hard, but we need to be independent so we're prepared and ready to face what's ahead of us. And the best preparation is to trust God's word. That's the best thing to put on is our shield. I kind of like to think about this first divided into three sections. The first part is... The Lord is my strength and my shield. In verse six, it talk, verse six, it talks about, he has heard my supplica supplication, he has heard me. Thank you, you heard me, the Lord says. He calls to us all the time, but do we hear him? And so as we put our shield on, he provides us the protection of his strength. He gives us supernatural faith to walk out what he's called us to do. And I wrote down, by your word, we are brought faith. It only comes from hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the word was God. And he was in the beginning and the word was with God. And so he is our heavenly father waiting for us to call upon him and then to hear him and walk by faith. I'm thinking about David in the story of David and Goliath, when David has a choice to put on the shield that King Saul provided for him, and he did not choose it. He did not choose a physical shield. He chose a supernatural shield, God's saving strength. And he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord, my God. He knew where his strength came from. And he defeated the giant. David knew and trusted God to be his strength. And God had proven to David before that he was his strength. We get our faith from our experience in God's word and walking through things. Our trials, like we've been talking about in James, bring us opportunities to trust him. Not always easy. Not always pleasant. Not what we want sometimes. The storm is not what we want sometimes. But God's word says, his word is forever settled in heaven. Then the second part I'm thinking about this verse is during the chance to trust him. The part says, my heart trusted in him and I am helped. As a former teacher, always a teacher, the ED ending indicates something has happened in the past. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. This experience gives us even more faith. When I trust him, I receive his help. God uses times of waiting in the midst of the storm to build our trust in him. He's like my granddaughter again, watching in the foyer, waiting, caring, 
knowing that he has provided opportunities to grow and trust in him, to listen and do. During the wait, God says he is our help and our protection, our shield, something we put on to protect us. You know, my husband just had back surgery and it's been hard, a lot of chronic pain. But during this wait, God promises that he's with us. And Kelly told me one time in a text, it's important to trust God's word, but she said these words, baby steps are still progress. Every test we have is a baby step. God proves his faithfulness to us. He is so good to us. Faith is a disposition of the mind, Charles Stanley says. Dr. Charles Stanley, the way I think. I have assurance that God will keep his word. I have confidence that he will bring it about. Faith is based on the promises of God. Where do we find those promises? We hear them from our, our Father God in his word. We hear them when we take time to read his word. I have a sense of contentment when I trust in him. And joy when I am not assured, but I get it from him. Faith quiets my spirit. Third part of this verse, after, if I trust in him, my heart is helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. After I trust him, put on my shield and trust him, I can rejoice. I can see his faithfulness. I can look back and see what he's done when I take the time to really think about how good he is. I know he has helped me. I have joy and peace in believing and seeing his strength, but not my own. Something happens when I truly yield what I hear God say. When I truly yield and listen to his voice and believe his word and act on it. I was coming home one day from an errand from hy here in Mount Pleasant and there's a yield, there's a road and it has a yield sign. And God said, yield to me. Are we yielded to his word? Do we really trust his way? Or do we think we need to have our own? We may be going through things that are not what we really wanted, not what we ever expected. But God works all things together for our good. If we trust him, we are called according to his purpose. We need to trust his word. Like David, put on our shield of faith. Know our God is mighty and he will get us through and he will give us cause to rejoice. If I do not cho choose to yield to his, his way, then I might be going down a road that never finds peace, never a road of hope, never quite the answer that I need. I'm unsettled in my spirit. And I can get more and more discouraged and wonder what's wrong. And that's a cue to finding the way that God wants me to, to walk with him. Just take more time to listen, to find a promise of God that I can really trust in, that I can really reach with my spirit. As I apply this verse, I think of the Bible story that, you know, we teach our little kids. We've taught, we've been taught since we were children growing up wasn't only just to give us a picture in our mind, but it's to prepare us for our battles, spiritual battles. God did that for a reason. He prepared us for today. He is a good father. We help, we help our children grow up and prepare them for the day that they will be independent. And each day we make a choice to put on our own shield of faith. And when we're putting our shield of faith on, we're demonstrating to our children the importance of God's word. The, the importance of his faithfulness to all generations. They will make a choice too. Will our choices influence their choices? I do hope so. That's the greatest inheritance legacy we can leave our children is faithfulness, a faithful God and trusting in the promises of God. Am I putting on the shield of faith? Am I trusting his promises to give me his strength? and not my own. God is faithful. And his enemy, his, his shield of faith will bat off any of the enemy's lies and help us walk strong together. 
when I have my shield up and I trust God, others will see me rejoice. Others will see the joy, even through the trials and the tests and temptations. Others will see that we trust in God. And that's our story as the body of Christ. That's what the Bible's all about. That's what the Bible is all about, telling us the story of those who walked before us, and now we're adding ours to it. And as others see us rejoice, it will give them more faith. And that's why the body of Christ is such a wonderful blessing. Is my story helping someone else to trust God? I hope so. And then as we tell others our story, that how God has touched our spirit, changed us and shown us his faithfulness, it helps them to trust God too. So is my heart rejoicing and praising him? Or is it telling my troubles or telling my or telling his faithfulness of his strength? Let me read the verse again. It's one of my very, very favorite verses. And I know that God gave me this verse because I was asking him and he said this verse, the Lord is my strength and my shield. Psalm 28, seven King James version. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song will I praise him. And there's a verse, uh, a verse, uh, a scripture song we learned a long time ago, and I just struggled which verse to talk about today, and so I woke up singing this song, so then I knew it was this verse. So bear with me as I sing this song to you. So, you are my strength, O oh God. You are my help, O oh God. You are the one on whom I call. You are my shield, O oh God. My life I yield, O oh God. For you will ever be my all in all. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you that you hear us when we call to you and bring our cries to you for help. You are already there waiting to help us put our shield of faith on. By the promises of your word, we can walk strong in you. And we can walk strong in for ourselves, for our brothers and sisters in Christ, join our hearts together. And for all those in the future, in the world who don't know you, in our families and future generations, you promise your faithfulness to all generations. I ask you for strength for our New City Church family is all that's gone on in these last several months. But we know that you are with us. You are the saving strength of your anointed. And together with rising voices, we give you praise for all that you're doing in our lives individually and together collectively. We pray for Cedar Rapids, we pray for Mount Pleasant, we pray for Des Moines, we pray for Lafayette, we pray for Clear Lake. Father God, we lift up our pastors to you. We pray for all those whose homes were hurt by this storm recently. And we thank you for being our saving strength, for being our shield. Our hearts trust in you and we are helped. We speak it in faith. And we thank you for being so faithful. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, New City. It's been fun seeing you. Love you.